Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is safe, including your families, in this COVID era. I'm going to talk on can technology help in the COVID era? Let us see what we have come up with. I did a bit of a research the past few days before making this presentation. And we all know that necessity is the mother of invention. And the innovative minds are from anywhere, every uh, continent, every place. And they are watched very carefully. Is using syringes and IV sets. There you go. So, what is expected of technology? It cannot prevent the pandemic. However, it can help you prevent the spread, educate, warn, empower those on the ground to be aware of the situation and thereby noticeably lessening the impact. Physicians and health systems all over the world are racing to adopt a system which is virtual, which can treat with the least physical meetings between the patients and the health providers. But many doctors are watching warily. The pandemic has affected every industry all over the world, including healthcare. They are all interrelated. We have been trying to avoid the infection and its spread, find a vaccine. It has impacted on trade. It has impacted on travel and on the financial market. So it is an all around issue. Now, innovations in a daily life are something which we all come across. Online shopping, digital and contact lens, contactless payments, work from home, distance learning, online entertainment, Supply chain, that's the fourth industrial revolution globally. 3D printing, 5G internet, robots, drones, and the most important for us, telemedicine. So there are opportunities everywhere, even from work from home collection, as you can see. So what is telemedicine? It's a combination of internet and health. It's e-consult, e-prescription, e-medicine purchase, and e-payment. Basically, our services were oriented around the physician with the doctors, the surgeon concerned. From here, we have to change our orientation towards the patient by the use of gadgets, internet, and the apps that are there, which is uh, used for the benefit of uh, advancing the technology. Attendance face facial reading apps are available now, which does not require your thumb impression. There are apps for digital consultations. Every hospital is coming up with their own apps to help their own physicians, staff, and the patients. Remote monitoring has become the norm. You have gadgets which are there on the wrist, which can transmit and record your vitals as well as advanced monitoring system, which I'm sure will be available for everyone very soon. During the pandemic, several innovations have come up. And here you can see the IV set, which has been attached to a electrocautery um, pen. And the basic idea is to suck out the smoke that comes out. These were the initial, year, initial days of the pandemic when there was a lot of confusion about the air filtration of the circulation and so on and so forth. And you have the face shield, you have the shield, patient shield for intubation and extubation. So these, this is how it all started. Then went on to create a, a, a transport system where a COVID positive patient could be transported from one place to the other without infecting a lot many people. You already have a pre-op kiosk where you can punch in all your details before your pre-op assessment. On a daily basis, you have drones delivering, you have got robots delivering your stuff at home, contactless, as well as you have restaurants which require you to pay without touching, without 
manpower anywhere you will not see anyone classes have started the schools are all going on we are on a web we are on a webinar and so are the classes so it is the human adaptability that is at its full play we can adapt to the changing situation very fast robots have been pressed into work where the staff the healthcare workers is afraid to go these robots talk to you help record the vitals and transmit them so what has digital health done so far we have artificial intelligence powered ct scan interpretation which reduces the reading time and a radiologist can sit in the comfort of his office or home and do the reading without any problem we have automated mask machines for n95 masks we have indigenously produced ventilators which are far less expensive and low cost ppes which are now being extensively used everywhere machines are being operated by foot we have covid safe transporting patients systems we have sanitizer tunnels which have which are a controversial things on its own but a safe swab phone booth testing apparatus where the patient the patient is sitting outside and you are inside the phone booth and doing the the swab test without getting without risking your uh, self to the contamination so how has data science and technology come together to fight the pandemic we have been able to use artificial intelligence to identify track and forecast the outbreak diagnose the virus process healthcare claims drones delivering medical supplies robots sterilize deliver food and supplies we developed newer drugs we have developed advanced fabric for extra protection artificial intelligence to identify non compliance of infected individuals which is very important for contact tracing chatbots to share this information and now the supercomputers are working on a vaccine which is soon to be released the amazing part that i notice is the is the creation of dashboards this was not heard of in many cities especially in india but now every city has its own dashboard it it basically gives you the whole uh, different types of beds with ventilator without ventilators in the icu the ordinary oxygen beds and they are updated every day of different hospitals as you can see the names of different hospitals now you don't have to call up each and every hospital to know where the beds are vacant on this dashboard which is updated every day you know exactly where to go this has got tremendous tremendous type of opportunity and we have uh, the ability to continue this the way it is payment apps and contact tracing apps on your mobile is is already there six examples of innovation is the simple that we use every day is scan pay and go dynamic digital signage camera scanning of people qr code virtual fitting rooms click and collect and virtual queuing contact tracing apps every country has developed their own india has arogya setu trace together from singapore covid safe in australia covid 19 app in uk so what is its application in day surgery pathways we have these pathways that we all use in our daily practice and as you can see the pre op assessment consultations part of investigations pre op preparations admission surgery most of it can be done remotely except maybe the investigation some part of it you may have to go into the to the in, the hospital and the admission and surgery with part of pre op post op assessment and discharge of course can be done uh, in the hospital and the rest followed up remotely they have found that globally across all the industries there have been tremendous rise in the utilization of tele intelligence as you as i may call it to contact communicate and keep track of each other so the future is something like this 
Imagine a new reality where you don't have to travel to work because you could just teleport there. Where you could shake your teammate's hand and feel together even if you are continents apart. Where the rules of physics don't exist. And everything is designed to make your meetings more productive than ever. Where the whole space around you is your blank canvas. And you can use your superpowers to create three-dimensional mind maps. A reality created for agile meetings, presentations, and brainstorming sessions. And its application is in, in, in application in medicine is something called as HoloLens. I'm a surgeon and I'm the Chief Medical Officer of Medical Realities. So you just showed me the most incredible video that I have ever seen. It is a bit of the future. Can you tell me a little bit about this operation that you did? It's with the HoloLens sure. and it went across three different mm -hmm. countries. At three different continents, three actually. Three different continents? Nina. Oh my God. So, <laughs> exciting. So this is real sci-fi. So one of the things we're trying to do is think about how we change the way we communicate uh, from doctor to doctor or doctor to patient, for example. So we used a HoloLens um, yesterday to connect four people in three continents. That was the US, India, and the UK, London. And what we did, we, during the operation that I was performing on a patient with cancer, we took some time out, put the HoloLens on, and we connected into a virtual space. We could share the scans, the images of the patient, interact with them, discuss the case in more detail, much like a multidisciplinary team meeting that we do normally in the healthcare practice. This was obviously quite different. It was virtual. There's people around the world connecting. And, you know, it was an incredible experience. It's the way I think uh, the healthcare in the future should progress. So the future is amazing. And to sum it up, there's a review from the Harvard Business Review. So it says that while there is no doubt that the pandemic is amplifying the adaptation of newer technologies, technological advancements are already changing the world over in the past two decades, from living standards to the very nature of our work. But there is a fear that the robo or artificial induced may cause unemployment. Therefore, we need to ramp up the, in, the investments in human capital, which is, as they call it, to increase our knowledge, skills, and health, create social protection for the safety of the net coverage, affordable access to internet, upgrading the taxation systems, reduce disincentives in loss of formal jobs. With this, I come to an end, and I will leave you with a small clip to see what our future will be. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's actually something much closer to Superman, or at least Iron Man. This is a jet suit developed by UK-based Gravity Industries. And while in the past the suit has been on display more as a proof of concept, now they're showing off the jet suit's real-world applications as a means of fast response and rescue. So just how much faster can first responders arrive using a jet suit rather than conventional cars? Well, in its first test simulation, the jet suit responder was tasked with racing another team in a traditional rescue vehicle to a 10-year-old girl who had fallen from a cliff. It took the conventional motor vehicle 25 minutes to arrive and signal the chopper. It took Gravity Industries jet pilot just 90 seconds. So how do first responders feel about the suit? First flight in Cumbria uh, for a jet suit that's going to save lives and he's suffering. So incredible moment, truly, truly incredible moment. Amazing, amazing. Thank you very much.